Hey, what's going on everybody? So uh, for the subscribers of my channel, two quick updates. The video I was intending to get out was not this one. Um, for that video where I'm working on my uh, air system on board my Jeep, on my onboard air system, uh, I broke an aluminum part, had to wait for parts to come in and um, they're in. I'll, I'll do the repairs this week, but I wanted to have that video out last week. Unfortunately, um, I screwed that up. But uh, And the other thing for the subscribers of my channel is unfortunately one of my chickens actually died and we'll talk a little bit about that on my next garden update. Date. All right, but for this video, we are going to be uh, replacing my water pump. So why are we replacing my water pump? Number one, I'm going to go ahead and insert some photos here. But uh, every time I would fill up, uh, my, number one, I noticed that I was leaking out some radiator fluid, uh, radiator coolant, only when I was, uh, only ba basically whenever the reservoir was full, it would leak. Um, and so after doing my research and I was a little unsure on why it was happening because I could not physically see the link, uh, see where the leak was coming from, uh, I, I I went ahead and uh, uh, then realized that I came across a video that said it was more than likely the seeping hole and it was a sign that the bearings were going bad and it was time to replace. All right, so here we are today. Um, so just for the everyone who knows or doesn't know or is watching this video and is not a subscriber, um, I'm a DIY guy. I'm not a professional mechanic. Um, so if you're trying to see how a DIY person does it, uh, you know, and some of the trials and tribulations and maybe some of the added narrative that goes along when you're doing it yourself for yourself for the very first time, then this videos for you all right so let's send it all right i'm getting ready to set you guys up on the uh tripod right now so and give you guys a good sort of side view of me replacing the water pump but just want to let you know real fast that uh i went ahead and uh put a little something down below to catch any coolant that's coming out i don't anticipate i'm not going to do a full uh uh, tr coolant flush and I'm not going to fully drain it. Um, I do have some coolant uh, basically ready to top it off once I get done here. Um, but uh, um, that's just to catch anything that may come down so I can properly dispose of it. All right, so let's go ahead and set you guys up and uh, we'll go to the next step. All right, now that I got my short person extender, I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove the uh, upper radiator hose uh, just to kind of clear up some space and also to kind of do the initial uh, drainage just to have less draining. All right, now we're on. So now I need to get the uh, ratchet down there first, and then uh, we'll go ahead and hold her. Um, I'm gonna basically, let me show you. I'm gonna put her, I'm gonna put the ratchet on open, and I'm gonna keep this roughly around here, and then I'm gonna hit it with the, hit the, the crescent wrench with the hammer counterclockwise to hopefully unloose the, loosen this thing. And I said hopefully. Things are never easy for me. All right, it's hammer time, let's do this. Better not be telling me can't touch this stupid engine. Now what I'm going to do just to create a little bit more space is I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, fan shroud cover here and uh, go ahead and uh, um, they give me better access to what we got here. All right, so there's four bolts to get the uh, fan shroud off and uh, they take uh, seven sixteenths. I got one here on the respective side and one below just down here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen those up and remove the bolts and then we'll come. I'll come back with you and show you me removing the, flan, the fan shroud and then also the fan. All right, so uh, I'd seen somewhere that uh, since there's fluid in the uh, bearing of the fan, you want to basically keep it upright as if it were sitting in the vehicle itself. Uh, and, and that is because uh, you don't want the water to go ahead and uh, start leaking through the bearings. I'm not sure. 
So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna go ahead and remove the uh, fan guard from in front of the water pump. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the belt, but uh, there's probably an easier way to do it than I did it. But in order to kind of break the bolts through, free, I had to go ahead and basically put pressure on top uh, to put a little bit more resistance and bang, bang it a couple of times, uh, and then that it finally broke loose. So let's go ahead and remove the pulley. Okay. All right, here's the uh, fan shroud. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the four bolts and just put them in here with it. I'll clean them up later before I'd install it. All right, so I'll give you guys just a quick look of where we're at right now. Here is the water pump itself. I got five bolts to get off. Uh, I think it's three on top and two on the bottom. I'll double check. But uh, the other thing that I gotta do is I gotta remove this heater hose and also the uh, um, the uh, return uh, radiator hose so or correction the feed hose so what we're going to do is um, in order to get to the water hose i got to remove this uh, um, pulley bolt so we're going to go ahead and remove that real fast and then go ahead and take off um, the um, hoses and then also the uh, water pump itself all right so the good thing about bringing the water pump up here is two things number one the bolts you take out you can put them into the correct position Why and then also uh, because it's um, it's I'm in the sun, you know, and turning wrenches gets a little hot. Right. And then also, uh, I, I can see exactly where the bolts are if, um, because from up top, I can't really see these. I can only really feel them. So we'll go ahead and place this up here. And then as I pull the bolts out, that'll be my reference. Uh, or up here-ish. All right, so now that the rest of the uh, coolant has seemed to have drained out, or at least uh, the way that's going to come, let's go ahead and uh, pull off the hose here. Oh, my God. All right, we got more. All right, now that that's off, let's go ahead and transfer this part over to the new pump. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so unfortunately last night I wasn't able to finish it because it was getting too dark. Uh, I didn't have the tools I need in order to um, talk about it. Let's just go ahead and talk about it. So, so far the absolute hardest part and biggest time sink of this job has been removing the uh, old gasket from the... Uh, um, from the uh, engine uh, case. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in some photos of my trials and tribulations uh, Basically, I'd have to it's, it's not a good angle here and do the lighting um, uh, I had to basically take some photos and then kind of check it and inspect it And I, I was able to use my family to basically, you know, give me some QA And finally I ended up here uh, is where I was able to basically go ahead and uh, call it good So that's where we are now. All right, so let me uh, let me show you some of the things that I did last night um well, in short, you know, don't won't go into too, too much detail, but on every single bolt that I removed, I went ahead and went to the uh, ang to the uh, uh, wheel, the wire wheel, and I uh, cleaned them all up. And in addition, yesterday I went ahead and painted the heater hose uh, blue. I just still have it. This it was the heat resistant stuff, but I don't know how well it's seen here. But there was some chipping of the uh, black paint uh, and rusting. So after I went and cleaned it up, I had bare metal, and I figured, hey, let's go ahead and just. Uh, use the blue paint that I have just to add a little bit of color contrast. All right, so now the next step for us to do is to start reassembling. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I picked up some of this uh, gasket dressing uh, and sealant. It is fuel resistant, but it's not fuel system, it'll be for coolant. And what I'm gonna do is just put a very light coat on, on both sides of these uh, gaskets to, to basically protect against some of the irregularities, then also to hold the gasket in place when I put it in. All right, let's send it. So I'll go ahead and insert this clip uh, where it makes more sense, but uh, I f forgot to mention what, what I had to use in order to get the gasket off the uh, engine block was this flap seal, uh, flap grinder on the uh, flap disc for, on my 
Dremel. I think uh, if I were to have a die angle grinder or something that I can go 90 degrees, this probably would have worked best, this uh, flat uh, disc uh, sander, but uh, it's, I had to use this. All right, now that I got the water pump on, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten everything down in a star formation, starting from the top to the bottom and keep just going back and forth. All right, so I got the water pump, everything tied down, so that's tied down pretty good. Now it's time for me to go ahead and uh, uh, connect the hose. I'll go ahead and remove the red cap now too. And uh, I'll, I'll connect the radiator and the heater hose. Uh, and then, yeah, we should start uh, bolting it back together, putting the belt on and everything. So let's, let's get to it and send it. All right, so everything I touch, I clean. So I went ahead and I got these all cleaned up on the inside and outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these on. All right, now that the uh, the belt is on, we're gonna go ahead and put the fan and the fan shroud on. All right, if all is complete, then all I should have to do is put on this radiator hose start her up and top off the coolant and she should be good to go. it is running and there are no leaks right now like before and I just opened up the hood and the reservoir is full so it looks like repairs are effective and complete all right well I hope you guys enjoyed some of my weak humor in this and I got a little kick out of this uh, mechanical video um, but I have driven it now driven the Jeep with the water pump on uh, for about a day I uh, went out to the desert came back I I'll be upfront that uh, when I first uh, got it it seemed like it was running not above normal but higher than it was beforehand um, but as soon as it seemed like the because uh, that when I filled up the water reservoir um, it, it, it basically sucked all that back in down it was at the full and went back down to the ad as soon as it did that it seems like it's running about normal right now I'll still keep an eye on it um, but it seems like uh, you might want to expect just a little bit of variation but as long as it it's not above the normal so then you shouldn't have an issue if you're you know a non-mechanic like I am and doing this for the first time yourself but anyways thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one